is a SQL goddess, if I might say this. And it's a lot of fun to be able to work with data and organize things along with her in the day. And maybe you've met Simon as well, another part of our team. We're upstairs, we do Pharmaseal. We are a clinical trial software thing. So it's been a lot of fun to be here at the Ingenuity Center. I've only been for a couple of months with my wife living here, just up the way. About a 15 walk, minute walk up the road, so lovely. I'm like, I guess right now, it's hard to hate a place like this, as it feels very much like where I'm from, honestly. A little bit of uh, the West Coast over there in States. So, welcome each of you. My name is Lauren, and it's an honor to be here with you. Because it's my estimation that like an hour and a half of official time is a fairly short time frame for something as large, as interesting as this, this well, I'd like to get underway without like a lot of other further introduction and such. But please, as we'll have time frame to be able to perhaps stretch for a moment, I would encourage you to be introduced to one another and to enjoy. We've already had a little bit of connection about people interested in GPS. A question was posed maybe about 15 and 10, 10 minutes ago even, about uh, how do we get uh, GPS stuff to work out. Uh, you could have a mobile application that is built from under the underlying technology to be just a web page and then have it to look very much like would be a mobile application. You could then uh, pitch this kind of a thing over to investors. You have it then cross-platform. It will run on an Android, an Apple device and so forth and have uh, what feels very much like a native app but really okay all you did was just put together this cool little JavaScript and uh, other web application because otherwise you have to learn let's say for an Android device like this is well you'd have to learn a little bit of Java generally or maybe even C if you want to get a little bit more performance out of this guy if you want to have the fastest possible performance then you need to get pretty low level on things some of the newer languages out there actually will resemble some of the code that we'll look at today the newer languages Go and Rust are some of these that are fairly low level like C++ C++ has been uh, really hard to eradicate because it's just so fast. It's not necessarily very easy to code. Maybe some of you guys have fought that battle back in school. It's a little bit mind numbing. You're getting pretty close to the hardware this way. Uh, but because of that uh, low level nature, then it offers some of the greatest performance and things like 3D rendered games might often utilize uh, that kind of code. What are we after? We're after JavaScript today. At what realm is it like uh, in terms of nitty gritty versus so easy and abstracted from the chip, like at what level might you think JavaScript exists? How much is it like C++ or how much is it like just a really lightweight scripting thing? Any ideas? Oh man, is it lightweight is what uh, I'm hearing. Any other ideas? Tell me more. Okay, well, does it care? Let's say I set up a variable, okay, JavaScript, and I have it to be an integer currently, it's number five. And then I say, actually, I want x equal to the string of taco, T-A-C-O. Does it care? Does not mind. Should I want it to care is another very important question, perhaps. Why might I want it to complain if I said x is equal to 5? And then all of a sudden I turn around and I say, well, wait, x is equal to taco. How might that be not a wonderful idea? Anybody hear about strongly typed languages <laughs> as opposed to weakly typed languages? Anybody hear of this concept? Let's describe why we, we might care. Languages which might care and absolutely, absolutely do care are things like Java, uh, uh, Java not JavaScript, but Java itself. And there is a difference, that's important to, to know. Like, if you're approaching these two languages, you might think like, well, the name is similar, so why can't they just be similar at the core? But surprisingly, Java is absolutely way different and a lot more robust, actually, in a lot of ways, than is JavaScript. Oh, and then I'll, I'll be asking in a moment, just so you kind of get your, uh, your mind set for this next question that I'll ask in a moment is, well then, why is JavaScript so popular? But let's not ask that one yet. That'll be coming. Like, why is it so popular? But so, if Java is so much more robust in ways, then why is JavaScript so popular? That, that's a question I'll ask you in a moment, so maybe be thinking about that. But let's go back to the original question. That is, um, why would I want JavaScript to complain if I say x is equal to 5, an integer, and then it's, uh, just turn right around and I say, like, okay, wait a minute, no, x is equal to taco. Let's do it right now, in fact. We'll set up that code at this very moment. 
Some of you might have viewed the video. There is a video perhaps in your email, a link that you had had. Terry had put that out. There she is in the back. Thank you so much for organizing this session, by the way. She works upstairs in the lab with us and it's a lot of fun. Uh, perhaps in the video then you'd seen, you can open up this console and, and you can uh, be able to put in a cute little code inside. section. If I do uh, put in the code of, should I just say, by the way, x is equal to five? Is that adequate for JavaScript? Is there any other things that I might want to apply on this line to be able to make it work? VAR. The VAR keyword, while not essential, would be recommended strongly because if we don't use the VAR keyword, we'll find that we could get into trouble. It might assume that even if I'm in a scoped place in code, that would be inside of a function essentially, even if I'm inside of a function, I say x equal to five, you know what it'll do? It'll set up x on the global scope. And that is often very messy. That is not an encouraged practice. We'll be getting to more of this functional scoping in a little while. And actually that's where that video, that 40 minute video that you might've seen prior to coming to class, that's where it left off actually, is to talk about functional scoping. So it is best if I might say then, var x equals five. Maybe also some of you out there are like, hey, wait a minute, have a semicolon. Anybody who might've thought that, well, extra brownie points is chocolate next door. I don't know what the hell that means. Uh, anyway, so we're saying x equals five. X is equal to taco. It doesn't complain one iota. Why did I not have to say var before that, by the way? Yeah, so var keyword only happened once. Why? Could I have said var? I should have, or could have, or I could have, but should I have? I didn't. Well, it's, you could be explicit, couldn't you? Or could I be explicit? Now, if I've already said var x, well then, has it reserved a little place in memory to say, I guess I'll keep x things here then? Ah, uh, yes, it has. Okay. If you var again, you, you are re declaring that value. Yeah, and this is unnecessary. So, yeah, kind of opening up this place in memory again, it actually just looks at me and says, all right, like I already set this up and you're trying to tell me to do it again. You're just silly. And it just goes on its merry way. It doesn't complain a lot. That's the nature of JavaScript. It's a very easygoing thing. You don't get a lot of syntax errors with what other languages might cause syntax errors for. Like for instance, this, if we get back to that original question, we have strongly typed languages that would not like any part of this. Why might I opt, in some cases, to prefer a strongly typed language that would complain and say, hey, wait, wait, you, you, you said you had an injury. Now you want to like try to change rules about this thing and then say that this thing is a string? That's what we'll call these pieces of text. It's a string. Why might I like Java, .NET, Rust, Go, Swift, or any of these other languages that are strongly typed? C++? Well, I mean, if you try to do that in C, well, it will definitely complain. Yeah, it'll throw us all kinds I, of trouble. I think Okay, each of these individual characters, like just from memory alone is all I can tell you on this because it's silly to know these things, but like the letter A is equal to a decimal 97 internally. Uh, the letter C is equal to a decimal 100. Like every letter has this numeric code that's associated and that's the idea of ASCII or ANSI is a very similar, same sort of a numbering system for upper and lower letters and such. Okay, I care because by the way, let's talk about how I'm organizing things in RAM. So it was indicated that C would not like this one iota. Maybe some of you guys are doing some like Arduino programming. C is kind of coming back into uh, vogue from Internet of Things and other devices that would like, need low level access to that kind of code. And this, wow, we gotta be very explicit. Anybody do this kind of uh, code, by the way? Anybody working with Arduinos or other cool little hardware devices? A little, uh, no? Yeah, well somebody out there is doing a little Internet of Thing fun and such. Uh, for which? Radio. For radio. Nice. Nice. You can, you can uh, install a uh, radio application, FM, ADA, and uh, wireless control. Oh, that's really rad. That is cool. We got a lot of talk about maybe during our little break times. I want you guys to mingle and such. I'm really eager to actually establish somewhat a programming community to be able to contribute to other stuff that's going on and have this to be like a, a growing trend to be able to have people interested in. So starkly different certainly is this. The reason I, to find and fully answer maybe a little bit more about, well, why would we maybe not want this to go on? So C would never allow it. Java doesn't allow it. We, we'll get a longer list of languages that would not allow this. 
is because if I reserve that place in RAM for an integer, that's like four bytes or eight, depending on uh, how current hardware might work. And then if I now up the, uh, the rules and say, hold on now, I want this to be uh, any long or short piece of text altogether, and actually each letter, you might notice, then takes up generally two bytes because we have this thing called Unicode. It gives us all manner of different possible characters, like Chinese cool little things, or uh, Sanskrit stuff, I guess, all kinds of hieroglyphic-looking stuff, with yeah, kanji or uh, other things. Uh, there's the accents and the graves and the umlauts and the things that all manner of letters like this from letters around the world. We can represent them now. Uh, historically, uh, characters have only taken up a smaller space half the size, and then it wasn't possible to do as much. But now with Unicode, we can do like every character known to man, thankfully. So we prefer that. So that's a dramatic difference to try to say that I'm only going to take always just four bytes, and then now to try to whoop, up and repave things and say it's all flexible. And then I must, if I am supposed to support that as the thing is just merrily running along, it is best if the code can prepare beforehand and then set the stage so to say, I'm going to allocate these places so that this is going to run really fast. So the idea behind a strongly typed language, my, 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 my that in some cases, would be, I want the performance to be as great as possible. Like, with this, there's occasionally, it's got to go in and sweep up and do this garbage collection. That's just a thing. Maybe you've heard of Java or Ruby or other languages in which they have this garbage collection. After you get a certain number of things all set up and going, then might run low on RAM. If you set up, let's say, a huge array of things, and then you start using it for something else, then I've got all this allocated space that is just now this gap in RAM, and it's actually comprising for a time. It's actually sitting there. Uh, it knows that it can be reclaimed, but it's just busy running your code and trying to be fast about things. It's thinking like, well, as soon as the CPU cycles kind of go down a little lower, I'll go ahead and clean it up. And that's actually within maybe just thousandths of a second, milliseconds. When it starts to free up, then it can do this garbage collection. JavaScript is an example of a language which it allows us to be very free form, and it's doing a lot under the hood for us to be able to garbage collect and do things back behind the scenes so that we don't really have to worry about it. In fact, we don't have very much that we can do to even prompt it to do this. It's a, it's a very flimsy language in this regard. We don't have a lot of control over those things. Thoughts and questions? I thought, I think I might have seen that there's some curiosity. I see some wheels turning, which is encouraging to me personally, actually. Thankful for that, certainly, in this sort of setting. With that, on we go. Let's actually then have some more fun. How many people were able to watch the video, by the way? So we have a 40 minute thing to get you bored off your gourd with this. So, a couple of people have had that chance to be able to watch. Two, three people have had the chance to watch the video. All right, how many people would say, of the things which have been discussed thus far, uh, this is pretty much old hat. Like, I've, I've been, I, you know know about some languages. I'm here hopefully just like expand and now add a new language to my uh, my tool belt to be able to have just one addition because you code in something else let's say how many people might be in that category want to add some JavaScript to your knowledge. All right and it's possible if you're in that category that this not has not been yet the most fast moving presentation. Just trying to gauge you see understand kind of where we are and where we're not and it's all good. How do people have an interest in JavaScript on the client side meaning then inside of a browser to have it uh, client-facing code, web stuff, and make the web prettier or more responsive and such by using JavaScript. Anybody have those key interests? Three people out of us have that interest. How many people, some interest, four even, uh, how many people have the interest of server-side, so meaning Node or other similar server-based technology, which would be, uh, runs pretty fast. You know, Walmart, with all their monstrosity internally, then they have a lot of their things running on Node and they'd convert it over and it runs a little bit differently than other languages in a way that it would have quite a bit of performance generally. And there it is, just a bunch of pile of JavaScript and they're doing mission critical stuff on it before it was even really recognized as being all that mission critical at all. Uh, there's uh, languages that have historically been perhaps more of for the FinTech or the health industry, they're just highly reliable such as Java and others that uh, are kind of now, um, they're a little dated and they're very strong and very cool how they operate certainly We've talked about some of that strongly typing and such. There's also the idea of like uh, inheritance and classes that would have patterns around them and things called interfaces and some concepts of contract-based programming. We have this in C and C++ as well. And these things are not in any way really 
well done, I think, in JavaScript. You can say that there's, yeah, there's sort of classes, but it's only sort of. It's really curious how it all works. This is such a flimsy language in a lot of ways. And here I am in the same breath as saying that it's so poor in those ways. I'll also say, well, what are its strengths? It's very approachable. It was only written in 10 days. That's a mind-numbing thing. Somebody just sat down and said, I, I need this for a browser. We need, need the scripting sideline thing. Surprisingly, Microsoft, with all of their power back in the 90s with VBScript that was somewhat mature, they were not able to uh, overtake the market and say, hey, everybody, let's use VBScript instead. They're, that was their effort back then. Instead, JavaScript has kind of kept the pace of throughout, and then my gosh, in about year 2000, it's just been skyrocketing. Maybe if you look around, job postings and such, there's a huge amount of interest to have skills surrounding JavaScript. Some of the frameworks and such, and some of you guys mentioned that there's uh, web-based things that you're interested in for this, front, front client side type of technologies. Some of the frameworks out there that you would probably have seen are AngularJS, which was kind of spearheaded by Google, there's, uh, on Fridays at Google, there's an opportunity to do whatever pet project you want. Uh, like Gmail had come out of this and others, and then one of them that came out is uh, Angular. So it, this guy, just for a lot of Fridays, said, I'm just going to make this cool framework. And then it was released. Uh, the Angular 1.x is uh, now been somewhat superseded by 2x. Not really, actually. Uh, the 2x, while it's more testable and there's a lot of things to like about it, they've kind of try to clean it up in a lot of ways and organize it better. It's about four times the size of the download. And then there's just been not as much adoption on some of that. So interestingly, if you're gonna look at Angular as being a framework to do client-side things, to be able to make it, let's say, that text boxes could be easily filled in and sent back over to the server, and uh, there could be tables of information shown or other nice interaction and such, Angular facilitates these sorts of things and interestingly, Angular 1.x might be more appropriate, at least in this day and age, for a lot of shops. Uh, there's also React, which has been somewhat spearheaded by the Facebook crowd, but certainly a lot of people are very excited about React. It's now eclipsed Angular in terms of popularity. Uh, there's a lot of projects maybe that, that uh, you have seen, and, and in fact, in our team, we've got uh, some use of React, fairly extensive use of React, actually, with some cool tables and stuff out there that automatically update based on how things are done with uh, binding and such internally. How many people interested in a specific framework, if there is any? Uh, so, Karina, interested in React, maybe. All right, very cool. Other uh, frameworks, and there's other frameworks out there, certainly. Other thoughts about, oh, I'm interested for, I just trying to do a little level check. This being our inaugural sort of, all right, let's code sort of a meeting. I didn't know fully what to expect, and I'm excited to get people in the same room and describe a little bit of code and such and get some, some excitement around it. Uh, I come from an environment in which there's just a lot of passion about code. So in the southern part of California, there's, uh, we call